Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to a special video for our compact, clean, and tileable blueprint series. Many of you have been asking, how do I put these together? How do I actually make these work? And I want to start by saying there is no right way to play the game. The main idea of my blueprint series was to give you tools, and you can build whatever base you want to build with those tools. Um, I don't think there is a right or wrong way to use these. However, I think um, some of you are just looking for an example. So we're going to go ahead and start with what would it look like to build a reinforced iron plate uh, kind of factory with this. So I'm just going to kind of show you how I might do it. But again, there's there's not a right or wrong way to do this. So don't get too concerned with whether your base looks like this or not. And I am going to be using the Mark IV build, but I'm not using enough iron where Mark IV would matter. You could use your Mark III versions just fine. And we're going to go ahead and set these to iron. We could overclock them as well if you had, you know, plenty of power shards. Quick note on power shards, you can production amplify them. So a purple slug is worth 10 power shards and whatnot. So you can get a lot of power shards these days. And remember, we, we connect in on the back left of our blueprints and our outputs on the front right. So if we're going to be making iron ingots here, then we're going to need to connect our iron input to there. And I already have kind of a container full just, you know, for example, purposes here. So you can connect this however you want. You can, you know, use an elevator to get your items up there so that it's already kind of at the right level, you know, whatever you want to do to make it look nice for you. And then I believe this is already connected to power. So there you go. And I want to talk about manifolds for a second. Some people, you know, say that manifolds aren't great or whatever. They will fill up. The only cost to using a manifold is a one-time cost of your stack size of whatever your input is times the number of buildings you have. So in this case, it is a one-time cost of 600 iron ore. That iron ore will eventually kind of fill up all the buildings and it'll never get used because they'll keep filling with more iron ore rather than using it. Um, if you ever get input starved, the manifold build actually provides a buffer to help kind of deal with that. but. Generally, that's not going to matter too much. But yeah, it's just a one-time cost of 600 iron, which is what, like a minute of a Mark II miner, you know, at some point in the game? Like, it's really not going to matter. Um, there are very few times where manifolds are going to really cost you something significant or take a really long time to fill up. So I, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. In most cases, manifolds are great. There are a very few cases where they might not be good to use, but I wouldn't worry about that. And now we're gonna get our constructors going because to get reinforced plates, we're gonna need plates and screws. So I personally wanna build this next to the smelters so that I can just bring those ingots right over to the input of the constructors. Now, if you had built another version of the smelters blueprint where the output belt ended up on the other side, then you could chain these in a line, right? You could have the smelters blueprint and then the constructors blueprint right after it. So depending on which way you directioned your belts, you might end up doing a slightly different build with this. And I like to leave a little bit of space between my my lifts. Um, you could leave even a little bit more space and put a catwalk potentially. So there's a lot of options for, you know, how you want to design things that way. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and build these constructors. I'm building the 8x version without even really considering the numbers. And that's kind of what I did for most of my my actual base, which we will show you uh, at the end of this video, because I'd rather have too much than too little. And so I just went ahead and did the 8x's for pretty much everything. Every once in a while, you, I needed two sets of 8x constructors. But for most applications, a single set of 8x constructors, maybe with some power shards, was good enough. And then we'll connect the power here to to what? Sometimes you gotta get creative. In this case, I think I can just go out to there. Does that work? Uh, no, it clips right through that. You know, you always get clipping. It feels like no matter what I do, it always ends up clipping with something. So I'll actually just put it right here. And then we'll build a power line right there and connect it up and call that a day. So now we've got our constructors set up to make iron plates from our iron ingots. And then I'm also going to want to make rods from iron ingots. So one strategy that I've used is two sets of constructors or, or you know, whichever blueprint you're looking at. It works with assemblers and manufacturers and everything else. 
I know I haven't done the manufacturer's video yet, but we'll get to that soon. I am gonna feel free to use the jetpack um, just for building this purposes. It's a little easier to see what we're doing, but you know, nu the nudging really helps. Oh, I grabbed the assembler's build. The nudging really helps for when you don't have the jetpack. I will say that that made a big difference. Before we had nudging, things were a little more complicated. So I am gonna line this up with the other blueprint, but we're gonna leave a gap. And the reason I'm gonna leave this gap is because this is gonna be making the iron rods. And we can't mix the output of plates and rods unless you're doing some sort of sushi build where you have an awesome sink and overflow control and all that. So I'm not doing a sushi build in this example, so we're not gonna we're not gonna mix the output belts. But we can reuse the input belt. So this input belt is gonna be iron ingots, and we can just take the iron ingots that are gonna come out of this splitter and hook them up to the next build. I guess that's a Mark V belt. Oh boy. Um, and that is going to, in a way, prioritize iron plates over iron rods because most of the most of the iron ingots are going to be split off of these splitters before it goes on to the next build. But if you have, you know, if you know that you're using plates and rods at a rate that's lower than the amount of ingots you have, it's not really going to matter. So it's up to you whether you want to kind of split the ingots in half. If you do, and another example of this is what if you were just using a different resource for that second build? What if that was gonna be copper uh, copper wire over here instead of iron rods? Then what I will sometimes do is I will build a second stack on top of the already stackables I have, and I will take a belt and I will connect it across like so. And now you have the iron wire here and then you can plug that in to your splitter or iron wire. Uh, you have the copper ingots here and you may need sometimes. Yeah, things are a little too close to the splitter. So you may need to make another set of stackables, you know, maybe back here. And that's what you connect that belt to. And then you come down into the splitter. So that would be if we were bringing something in like copper. In this case, we're using the same iron ingots. So we'll just leave that belt connected and let me go ahead and bring over the smelter output. It might even be at the same Z level. Yeah, look at that, that's convenient. Or no, that's the wrong belt. Um, again, we're clipping through the wire. Um, I just can't seem to avoid clipping right here, can I? That's really funny. Um, you know, one little trick that I've been using is I put a painted beam on the ground. Like, I guess we already have the painted beam there, but, um, and then you can put a wall outlet on it and then you can connect power to that, and then it kind of gets power lower to the ground. And if you put a wall outlet on the side, it actually will keep the power line kind of going through the foundation, which is clipping in a way, but it's clipping that you can't see. And in my mind, you can run power through floors in real life, so this feels very reasonable to me. So I call this floor power and I do it all over the place and it's pretty convenient because um, then you can connect power kind of through your foundations without really having to worry. If they were one meter foundations and it was and you would end up seeing it from underneath, you might see the wires. But I think once you're at a two meter foundation, it's already going to cover even long wires, you know, because they sag a little in the middle anyway. Uh, moving on to this build, you can see there's already plates sitting up here, which is wonderful. And I don't really need this belt anymore. And now we just got to get rods set up. And again, we're going to set it up so that the rods end up coming out the front here. So what I'm going to do is add another stackable over the iron plates. And again, you can build one closer to the second constructor if you want, or you can just build it right here. Um, depending on the build, you know, you may or may not have enough space to go up a tile. But we should just be able to connect this all the way over to the output. And that's gonna be the rods right above the plates all coming from this single input belt of ingots, which again, with the manifold build we're using, it's not balanced. It is going to send most of the ingots to make plates before any of them get over here to make rods. So you do need to pay attention to your overall rates that you're producing and or using. Oh, we're hanging over the edge here. I mean, 
normally you would have enough foundations to hold things up. <laughs> so let's uh, let's ignore that for now. Also, I highly recommend if you have a five button mouse, rebinding your paste settings to one of your mouse buttons is so nice to not have to hit control V on everything. I have very much appreciated just being able to hit one of my mouse buttons. So then we connect up the power to this build and why is that not connected? Did I disconnect? Oh, I didn't connect my floor power up to this power pole. That's what's going on. There we go. So now our iron plate ones are running again, and now you can see our iron rod production is running as well, and that's going to send iron rods down this belt. So there's iron rods and iron plates, and the one last thing we need is some screws, and then we can make some reinforced plates. So over here, I will plop down my Constructors X4, because in most cases, you'd have too many screws if you did an X8. I don't actually know the exact numbers and it would depend on your mark of belt. And then I'm gonna place an assembler's build. And this is where having mirrored versions of these could be nice, right? Because the input kind of comes in the wrong side here. So at least with the way that I've built these blueprints, it kind of makes sense to build left to right. Or sorry, right to left. I literally was showing right to left because the inputs come in on the right and the outputs go out on the left. So if you're building here and then here and then here, things kind of travel naturally, whereas here the outputs are kind of having to cross over the inputs with every single set of buildings. So it does depend on which direction you're going and you might want to make your blueprints differently based on that. And again, we'll leave a little bit of space between things. So that, yeah, the inputs are over here, which means we're going to have to cross over the output line. But yeah, these constructors we said are going to be screws, just the regular old screws. I'm not going to use any alternates here. When I was about to set this up, I actually was like, oh, I'm going to need copper and iron because you need wire for reinforced plates because I, I get so used to using the stitched iron plates recipe, which I highly recommend, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to have to input to this guy, um, you know, and that's going to cross over with this belt. So you can decide how you want to arrange it. I might bring, Let's see if this actually works. I might bring this down a level. Yeah, I figured it would be too close. So instead, since my rod output is coming pretty high, I might just connect it like this. Um, oh, I did that backwards. Shouldn't that conveyor have Oh, wait, is my constructor's blueprint backwards? Oh, my 4X is all messed up. I think I did my 4X wrong. Hmm. I hope this isn't the example one I showed you guys in the 4X video. This is backwards. <laughs> the, the, I have the inputs and outputs coming off the right side rather than the left side. That's funny. In this case, it is more convenient, but it isn't the normal build. Um, that's for sure. So we'll bring the rods over. And then the power is already connected, so we should see screws coming out here any moment. And then we'll bring the plates over to probably this line. So we'll take the plates here, bring them over to this guy. I do want to leave enough space here for a, a lift, so I might need... Might need a little bit more space. Again, this is the point at which you play how you want. You know, you guys wanted an example, so I'm showing you an example, but there are so many different ways to do the things I'm doing right now that would, you know, there's nothing wrong with any of them. All right, so we've got our plates hooked up. We're gonna grab the screws here and hook them up over there. Sometimes straight mode just does not wanna work. And there you go, now we've got screws and plates hooked up for our assemblers. Let's see if the power poles have a nice power line connection. That's good enough for me. All right, and then we'll pick our regular reinforced iron plate. Copy and paste that. And there you go. There's a reinforced iron plates build from iron ore. 
Oh. Well, I guess the screws are in the way of that, but you can always just connect it directly to this merger here. And now you've got reinforced iron plates. And like I said, this is just an example of what you could do. There is nothing inherently wrong or right about the way I organize this. In fact, there's a lot of things wrong about it, but it certainly works and it's fairly compact. And I didn't pay any attention to the ratios. Not a single bit. Can that bite you in the butt later? It certainly can. So you should probably at least ballpark your numbers, you know, just to kind of double check, like, am I getting enough of everything, right? So we're gonna get 160 iron plates and rods. Uh, I don't remember. It's gonna be 120 probably. Yeah, 15 a minute. And then screws, we're gonna be getting 160 a minute. Do we have enough rods to make that many screws? Yes, we have way too many, right? I'm only using 40 rods. So it is worth checking your numbers. I've got three of these, so I'm gonna be using 180 screws a minute, which I'm not making 180. So I would need, you know, another set of um, constructors here. Or the iron plates, I'm using only 90 a minute. So I have way too many, right? Because we have uh, 160. And then finally, we would be getting 15 reinforced iron plates a minute. Is that enough? Probably, I think in at least in the stage of the game where you're first making reinforced iron plates, 15 a minute is enough. But at some stage of the game, you might want more. But yeah, there you go. That's a basic build. So now I'm gonna show you kind of my base and what it's looked like for me to use these blueprints throughout the game. I have been doing a bus based base, which I do not actually recommend now that I've done it, but I wanted to try it. I've always thought it looks cool to have a bunch of belts uh, all together. And so once I once I got blueprints going, we made this big factory building and I brought in all the ores that I could on the bus and then we started processing them. So this is the beginning of the bus and here is the factory. So I'm going to switch over to the hover pack here just for demonstration. But you can see that we we kind of have an area between the bus and the buildings. So this is kind of the no man's land where I don't build any buildings. It's all just space for the belts to spaghetti around and do what they need to do. I have mergers and splitters set up along the bus and I can pull items off the bus. You know, pull items off this side here, pull items off this set right here, pull items off this set also in the middle. So you got to make sure they're not you know, overlapping with each other. It's kind of chaotic, uh, but it's worked out. And you can see we're smelting iron here and we're bringing Caterium, this is a good example. We're bringing Caterium above the iron to be smelted at a later line of smelters. And we're bringing back the Caterium ingots above the iron ingots. So that's one reason I like the way that I've set these builds up is you can easily just tower these conveyor poles up and get a lot more inputs and outputs to further machines down the line. So you can see here I left a gap, and then we just plopped another set of smelters for our Caterium into Caterium ingots. So that's, you know, basically three sets of six smelters, and I believe I've power sharded these by now because I need a lot of iron. But uh, yeah, and then we've got our copper, same idea. I, I don't have a second thing here because I ended up doing all my quartz processing over here. You can see my, my two sets of eight constructor builds. Um, you can see the quartz is coming in from a ceiling mount because it's going over all this. And so the quartz is going in and being processed into the silica. And then exactly like I showed you a minute ago, that quartz just carries on to my quartz crystal build. So the quartz crystals inherently have a lower priority than silica because of that. So if I was using all of my silica, and I don't even know the numbers, I haven't even looked, but it's possible that these constructors could use all of my quartz. It looks like they can't, because 90 times four is 360, so I have more than 360, so. In this case, it wouldn't really matter, because these constructors cannot use all of my quartz, but if they could, they would be using most of my quartz, and I would kind of see my quartz crystal dry up. So those are things you want to consider when you're setting all this up. And you can see here is a line of foundries, and that's to make my steel. And the steel's actually being split off to do multiple things. Um, here I've got my limestone making concrete, and it looks like the steel travels somewhere. What am I doing here? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm using the concrete plus steel ingot to make steel pipe alternate. So that's going on way down here. I've got quick wire because I had room for it. So I did more ceiling mounts for that. Um, I just built a catwalk back before I had the hover pack. Catwalks are very nice. And yeah, I'm making a lot of wire here. This is pretty much a full belt of wire. And on the first level here, I'm doing iron plates. But the iron plates are not going on the belt because they're pretty much only used in one place for a long time, which is reinforced iron plates. And here you can see I'm doing the same thing where I'm taking a material, bringing it above the other build to go to something further away, which in this case is copper sheets. Which it looks like I may need a power shard that, to be honest. I don't think I'm getting enough copper sheets. Um, so that's something to fix. Here I'm making cable, which is going over to... Th these are the only manufacturers on this floor. I came back and used some extra space I had down here to make crystal oscillators. I hadn't been making those before. The reason I'm making them here is because they need reinforced iron plates, and they're the only thing other than... Uh, where are they? My frames that use reinforced plates. So there you go. There's an example. I hope you've enjoyed kind of this showcase of what you can do with these blueprints that I've designed. It, it's been pretty effective. You know, I've, I've overbuilt things pretty easily. When I consider what Satisfactory looked like before blueprints, doing a project like this would have been insanely difficult. But this has actually been relatively easy to set all these up because you're only hooking up the input and the output and you don't have to do anything else and you're hooking up one power pole. And everything actually ends up looking quite nice even though I have a decent amount of spaghetti going on in here. Because of the straight lines of the blueprints, it all still ends up looking fairly nice. And because there's still straight lines of the materials I'm bringing over the blueprints, you know, that, that tends to look pretty nice. So, I actually am a firm believer that a little bit of spaghetti mixed in with your straight lines is the best look for a base. I think if it's too many straight lines, it actually can look uh, sterile and not very good. So having a lot of nice straight lines with your blueprints and, you know, lining up the buildings nicely looks good, but then having having a little bit of spaghetti and a little bit of messiness, I think, helps to make the factory feel alive. And, you know, they're not just all these straight lines and right angles. Uh, there are some curves and there are some slopes. I think that actually looks really cool. So that's just my preference, though. There's nothing right or wrong about that preference. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Let me, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, maybe someday we'll... We'll t uh, I don't know what happened with this. That was a glitched building of something. Um, this is my second factory floor, which is mostly manufacturers, and you can see the absolute towers of items we have going here because, you know, manufacturers use four items. Uh, this is everything we need for our ammo because we've got coal and sulfur to make black powder and stuff. But yeah, there's refineries up here and a lot of manufacturers. This was kind of my more advanced uh, phase phase three stuff on this floor, but it's all the same idea. There's nothing nothing too fancy up here. The manufacturer build is gonna be coming out in the next couple days, and after that we'll do a blender build, and then from there, I'm not really sure. We might do some of the super fancy buildings from the new tier nine stuff, but we'll see. We will see. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments. It's been fun doing these blueprints with you guys, and I'm excited to continue to do more. And if you have idea for ideas for another type of blueprint series, let me know. I'm considering doing one where I put all the belts through the floor. So rather than doing the items above the buildings, uh, what if we did a version where all the items just go directly through a floor hole in the foundation? And so we have the basement items, but that can get a little trickier, especially when you're dealing with something like manufacturers with four inputs. So. I'm not really sure if I want to do that series yet or not. I'll, I'll play around with it a little bit. And you guys let me know your interest level in the comments as to whether that's something you would like or not. Yeah, talk about spaghetti. I really had to spaghetti a lot <laughs> in, the, in this region. <laughs> Don't judge it too hard. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. As always, uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one.